Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics, some finance currents, the RBI notifications and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that you can get updated whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the PDFs of some of the sessions and we also uh, make sure that you stay updated about all our upcoming videos over here. So you can join this telegram group so that you can get the access to those free PDFs as well as the free quizzes. So let's move on to question number one now, which says Parliament has passed the General Insurance Business Nationalization Amendment Bill 2021 and we have to identify the statements which are correctly related to it. So let's see what is this bill all about and then we'll come back to our question. So Parliament has recently passed this very bill which was introduced by our Finance Minister in the Lok Sabha. Okay, this bill has recently been passed and this bill is going to amend a act called the General Insurance Business Act of 1972. So already a act the general insurance business related just ka focus tha ki jo ye general insurance ka business hai isko nationalize kiya jaye government ka stake isme laya jaye aur is act ko amend karne ke liye ab ye bill aaya hai if you remember then uh, uh, in the budget in this year's budget the finance minister proposed to take up the privatization of two public sector bank and when one general insurance company so this is a step towards privatization of that very company. So, if you remember, in the budget, the finance minister proposed that we will privatize two public sector banks and a general insurance company. So, this amendment bill is the first step of the privatization. How is it? Now, we discuss it. Presently, we have four general insurance companies in the public sector. These are the Oriental Insurance, National Insurance, United Insurance and New India Assurance. We don't know which of these is going to be the one where the government will bear its stake. So, government ne ek general insurance company ko privatize karna hai. In charo mein se wo kaun hogi ye nahi pata. To ye jo bill aya hai, ye pehle wali act ko amend karega aur ye privatization ki taraf ek pehla step hai hamara. The act was enacted to nationalize all private companies which used to undertake general insurance business in India. Jab ye act aya tha to ye उन प्राइवेट कंपनीज को नेशनलाइज करने के लिए था जो ऑलरेडी जनरल इंश्योरेंस का बिजनेस इंडिया में करती थी अब हमें क्या है अब हमें वापस प्राइवेटाइजेशन की तरफ जाना है इसलिए हमें उस एक्ट को अमेंड करना पड़ा द बिल सीक्स टू प्रोवाइड फॉर अ ग्रेटर प्राइवेट सेक्टर पार्टिसिपेशन इन द पब्लिक सेक्टर इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज रेगुलेटेड अंडर द एक्ट सो दैट एक्ट फोकस इज फोकस्ड ऑन nationalizing the private companies which were into general insurance but this bill is going to privatize those public sector insurance companies now so what has been the major highlight of this amendment bill the major highlight is the removal of the previous uh, provision where some threshold was prescribed for government shareholding. So the act requires that the shareholding of central government in the specified insurers must be at least 51% and the bill removes this provision. So the act said that this is the general insurance ka business in which 51% state should be government ka hona tha, central government ka, which was the main ye nationalized. Now we have to increase privatization, ki or badna hai, is liye ye naye bill mein ye provision has been removed. जहाँ जरूरी था कि गवर्नमेंट का ही 51% स्टेट हो, ओके? तो अब ये प्राइवेटाइजेशन इससे ज़्यादा हो सकता है इन इंश्योरेंस बिज़नेसेस में। So the bill seeks at enhancing the insurance penetration, social protection and ensure the interest of policyholders and ensure faster growth of the economy. So when now more private players can also take up major stakes in this general insurance business, there will be more number of such uh, insurance companies and they are going to provide more insurance protection. More insurance protection means more social protection and uh, it will thus ensure the growth for our economy. Okay, so this is the major amendment which has been proposed through this bill. Now if I move back to the question, we have to identify the correct statements okay so first is correct it is going to amend this act second is correct 
that it will ensure greater private sector participation third is incorrect because it says that the bill removes the provision where government should have at least 41% stake no it was 51% so this is incorrect only first and second are correct answer is option c moving on to question number 2 now RBI has recently extended the timeline for implementation of the circular on opening of the current accounts by banks that came last year the central bank has given them time until october end to implement the new rules on current accounts which were issued in 2020 which of the following is correctly related to this rule so let's discuss this rule first and then we'll come back to the question so last year rbi came up with certain rules and regulations as to who can open a current account where so the reserve bank of india has recent, recently issued the guidelines that this very circular which was to be implemented by 31st july can now get implemented by october end so the timeline has been extended last year current account jo khol sakte hain kahan khol sakte hain wo current account usse related kuch guidelines aayi thi jo follow karni thi 31st ek timeline provide kiye thi tab tak but uske baad bhi wo timeline extend hoti gayi aur jo last hamari date thi jab tak wo apply ho rahi thi wo tha 31st july but ab rbi ne usko further extend kar diya hai kyunki abhi tak wo guidelines properly implement nahi ho payi thi so let's see what were those guidelines and why were they introduced okay current account see you can open a savings account in a bank or you can open a current account you usually open a savings account when you are a salaried person who is going to earn salary uh, and it will be deposited in your account where much of the daily transactions are not to happen but what happens in this case is if you are opening a current account you usually open it when you have huge number of daily transactions with a lot of amount usually you you use such accounts for your business purposes so the entrepreneurs the businessmen they use such accounts because they have to carry out numerous transactions on daily basis of huge amounts so then they use the current account rbi was saying that there are some problems where people are siphoning the funds using this current account and the overdraft facility because of which it came up with certain rules so let's see what those rules were so the new rule was that no bank shall open a current account for customers who have availed the credit facilities in the form of cash credit or overdraft from the banking system so if there were some customers who have taken say a cash credit facility from some bank or so a overdraft facility from some bank then they cannot open a current account with some other bank this was the new rule overdraft is when you have some money in your account but you withdraw more amount okay so it's kind of a loan from the bank's end because you are not having that much account, amount in your account but you are able to withdraw more so it's a overdraft facility similarly if we talk about cash credit it's basically a short term kind of a loan which is provided by the bank okay for your working capital needs the short term funding can be provided through cash credit facility सो so, अगर आपका जो कस्टमर है उसने किसी बैंक से ये कैश क्रेडिट फैसिलिटी या ओवरड्राफ्ट फैसिलिटी ऑलरेडी ले रखी है तो वो किसी और बैंक में करंट अकाउंट नहीं खोल सकता ये रूल आया था ये रूल इसलिए आया था क्योंकि लोग क्या करते थे कि एक अकाउंट में एक एक बैंक में वो अपना करंट अकाउंट खोल लेते थे जहाँ से सारी बिजनेस ट्रांजेक्शन करते थे और दूसरे किसी बैंक के में वो एक अकाउंट खोल लेते थे जहाँ से वो लोन्स लेते थे ठीक है ओवरड्राफ्ट फैसिलिटी वगैरह ले लेते थे तो इससे क्या होता था वो लोन्स एक जगह से ले रहे हैं उस पैसे को वो यूज़ कहीं और कर रहे हैं अपने बिजनेस पर्पस के लिए तो जो लेंडर्स थे वो ट्रैक नहीं कर पाते थे कि उनका पैसा कहाँ जा रहा है वो वापस मिल पाएगा कि नहीं सो दे यूज टू टेक द लोन्स फ्रॉम वन बैंक और दी ओवरड्राफ्ट फैसिलिटीज फ्रॉम वन बैंक एंड यूज टू ओपन करंट अकाउंट इन अदर बैंक एंड कैरी आउट ऑल देयर बिजनेस थ्रू दैट अकाउंट बाय यूजिंग द मनी टेकन फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट लेंडर बैंक so what used to happen the lender bank was not able to track the movement of that money because of which the funds were misused and uh, it and those people who have taken the loans were not basically repaying them back to the lenders so to solve this problem this new rule came up other than that some other rules were also introduced like if a bank has lent a company less than 10% of its total borrowings of that company from all banks then company can credit funds into their od or cc account but debit that is if you have to transfer money that will be only allowed into those accounts where the money which has been lent is more than 10% of the total borrowing of that company from a bank suppose there is a company okay it has taken say um credit facility so say some kind of a loan from two banks bank a as well as bank b okay so if a bank has lent company less than 10% of the total borrowings that that company has from all banks 
if this company has taken borrowings from different banks okay and if the amount which it has taken from bank a is less than 10% of the total borrowing it has taken from all other banks then what can happen then that company can credit the funds into cc or od account but debits it can make only in special case so if it has to make say some deposit some amount in bank a it can do so where it is having less than 10% of the total borrowings but if it wants to withdraw and transfer that money to someone else then it can transfer that money to only that very bank from where it has taken a cc or od facility which is more than 10% of total borrowings theek hai agar is company ne alag alag bank se overdraft aur cc facility le rakhi hai ठीक है और अगर बैंक ए से उसने जो फैसिलिटी ली है वो उसकी ओवरऑल बोरिंग से 10 परसेंट से कम है तो वो इस बैंक अकाउंट में पैसा जमा तो कर सकते हैं ओके द कंपनी कैन क्रेडिट फंड्स इनटू सीसी और ओडी अकाउंट बट अगर उन्हें यहाँ से पैसा हटाना है तो उस पैसे को वो हटा के कहीं और डालना है तो वो कहाँ ट्रांसफर कर सकते हैं सिर्फ उसी अकाउंट में उसी सी या ओ अकाउंट में जहाँ पे जिस जिन उस अकाउंट में जिस अकाउंट के थ्रू उन्हें 10 परसेंट से ज्यादा का लोन मिला है ताकि उन लेंडर्स जिनसे उन्होंने मेजरली लोन लिया है उन तक पैसा वापस जा सके ओके उस पैसे की मिस यूज ना हो इन ऑर्डर टू मेक श्योर दैट द मनी विल रीच ओनली दोज लेंडर्स हु हैव बीन द मेजर लेंडर्स टू दैट वेरी कंपनी सो दैट द लेंडर्स गेट रीपेड एंड द कंपनी इज नॉट मिस यूजिंग द फंड दैट्स वाई दिस रूल केम अप other than that in case the borrowers have not availed this cc or od facility and their overall exposure overall loans which have they have taken from the banking system is less than 5 crores then there is no restriction on opening of current account okay agar unhone kisi bhi bank se cc ya od facility nahi li aur overall unhone kahi aur se loans liye honge ya jo banking system ka exposure hai unka wo 5 crore se kam hai to un pe koi restriction nahi hai current account open karne ki okay then in case the borrowers have not availed the cc or od facility from any bank and the exposure is 5 crore or more but less than 50 crore then the restriction on lending bank to such borrowers is not there from opening a current account to agar aisa case hai jahan 5 crore se zyada lekin 50 crore se kam ka exposure hai to koi restriction nahi hai on lending banks to such borrowers जिस बैंक ने लैंड किया है वहीं पे वो तब भी करंट अकाउंट खोल सकते हैं इवन नॉन लैंडिंग बैंक्स कैन ओपन करंट अकाउंट फॉर फॉर सच बोरोस दो ओनली फॉर कलेक्शन पर्पसेस सो अगर पांच करोड़ से ज्यादा या पचास करोड़ से कम का एक्सपोजर है तो जो बैंक ने आपको लैंड नहीं किया है वहां पर भी आप करंट अकाउंट खोल सकते हो ठीक है लेकिन सिर्फ कलेक्शन पर्पज के लिए ट्रांसफर के लिए नहीं For accounts where credit facilities are more than 50 crore, there is a special escrow mechanism which needs to be followed, where the escrow managing lender or the agent will open a current account for the borrower. So, if, so if the amount of credit facilities is huge, it is more than 50 crore, then this escrow mechanism is to be followed. So, escrow is basically when you use some kind of a third party who is holding the assets on behalf of two parties, where the asset can be your money, it can be your funds, it can be stock. तो ये थर्ड पार्टी जो है ना वो एस्ट्रो लीडर या एस्ट्रो लेंडर या एजेंट की तरह वर्क करती है द थर्ड पार्टी होल्ड्स दीज ऑफन एज एस्ट्रो एजेंट अंटिल इंस्ट्रक्शंस आर रिसीव्ड सो अगर अमाउंट ह्यूज है तो आप किसी एस्ट्रो एजेंट के थ्रू ही करंट अकाउंट बोरोर के नाम में खोल सकते हो बोरोर के बिहाफ पे खोल सकते हो ओके सो ये कुछ रूल्स आए सो बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव वाज टू मेक श्योर दैट द वंस हु हैव टेकन अ क्रेडिट और ओवरडाफ फैसिलिटी फ्रॉम वन बैंक दे शुड नॉट ओपन करंट अकाउंट इन अदर बैंक्स सो दैट द लेंडर बैंक हु हैज लेंड देम कैन एक्चुअली ट्रैक द मूवमेंट ऑफ सच मनी एंड द पीपल आर नॉट मिसयूजिंग द मनी बाय ओपनिंग द लेंडिंग अकाउंट बाय बोरोइंग फ्रॉम वन अकाउंट एंड ओपनिंग देयर करंट अकाउंट इन द अदर बैंक दिस वाज द बेसिक ऑब्जेक्टिव ओके so why was this introduced i have already discussed to prevent the misuse of funds log ek jagah se borrow karte the dusri jagah ka account wo business purpose ke liye use karte the jiski wajah se lender ko nahi pata chalta tha wo paisa kahan ja raha hai unhe wo wapas mil payega ki nahi okay this because the companies used to borrow from one bank divert money in accounts in other banks because of which lender banks cannot track the movements jis wajah se frauds hote the now those frauds can be prevented okay so this step can act as a hindrance to that fraud and this happens because firms borrow from usually from psu and open current account with foreign bank or a private bank because of which lending bank loses the visibility of funds 
okay they don't know whatever they has lent they have lent where that money has gone hence current accounts are permitted only at lending banks according to this very new rule okay so here if you have to see you have to identify the correct statements first is incorrect because it says that public sector banks can open current account for customers who have availed od or credit facility no no bank can open it remaining two are correct okay which is the rule which i just discussed and the usage of this rule so answer is option d that only second and third are correct now moving on to next question so next question says that sebi has reduced the minimum application value of the real estate investment trust and the infrastructure investment trust and has revised the trading lot for these emerging investment instruments to attract to make them attractive for the retail customers or the retail investors new requirement ranges between 10 to 15000 and you have to identify the minimum application value that was already existing so sebi ne recently कितना मिनिमम आप अप्लाई कर सकते हो रियल एस्टेट इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट में इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट्स में जो मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन वैल्यू है वो पहले काफ़ी ज़्यादा थी जिसे कम करके 10 से पंद्रह हज़ार कर दिया गया है ताकि रिटेल इन्वेस्टर्स भी इजीली इन्वेस्ट कर सकें सो एग्जिस्टिंग रिक्वायरमेंट क्या थी एग्जिस्टिंग मिनिमम एप्लीकेशन वैल्यू वॉज फिफ्टी थाउजेंड फॉर दी रियल इस्टेट इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट एंड इट वॉज वन लाख फॉर दी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट ओके so answer to this is option c recently this change has been made okay in order to make sure that the retail investors go also get attracted towards this so reit the real estate investment trust is a company which owns operates finances income generating real estate okay so ek tarah se yahan pe logo ka paisa pool kiya jata hai aur us money ko real estate mein invest kiya jata hai और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर इन्वेस्टमेंट ट्रस्ट में क्या है उस पैसे को जो पूल किया गया है उसको इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर असेट्स जैसे कि आपके रोडवेज हो गए हाईवेज हो गए पावर प्लांट्स हो गए वहाँ इन्वेस्ट किया जाता है सो व्हेन द पूल्ड मनी इज इन्वेस्टेड इन रियल एस्टेट दैट इज आर एंड वेन इट इज इन्वेस्टेड इन द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर असेट्स इट इज आई एन वी आई टीज ओके सो रियल इस्टेट अलाउ पूलिंग ऑफ मनी फ्रॉम मल्टीपल इन्वेस्टर्स इन टू सिंगल ट्रस्ट विच इज प्रोफेशनली मैनेज बाय द मैनेजर and invest in a um, immovable and rent yielding property or special ve uh, purpose vehicles holding such properties inv it is comprise portfolio of infrastructure assets all right so if i move ahead now both of these classes are new classes as far as the investments are concerned for the investors and they allow you to invest completely in real estate and infrastructure assets which are having low ticket size and adequate liquidity so it's going to offer more liquidity more uh, easy access for the retail investors existing abhi maine bataya 50000 tha aur 1 lakh tha requirement ab naya requirement hai minimum aapko 10 se 15000 mein hi aap inke liye apply kar sakte ho existing trading lot was 10 was 100 units now it has been reduced to 1 units for both reits and inv its okay sebi's this will move will bring more liquidity it will ensure more better price discovery provide attractive opportunity for retail investors to invest in this stable yield with growth potential so is instrument ka kafi acha growth potential hai lekin ye mehanga hone ki wajah se zyada amount invest karne ki wajah se retail investors isme invest nahi kar pate the to unke liye ye ek attractive option hai jo is instrument mein aur zyada better liquidity leke aayega all right so this was all about this very move of sebi now last question says Yes Bank and India Bulls Housing Finance entered into a strategic agreement to offer home loans to home buyers at competitive interest rates which of the following is incorrectly related to it so this is an example of a co-lending agreement okay where a bank and a housing finance company have together come up to provide the loans to the home buyers so let's discuss what is this co lending model and this recent case of yes bank and india bulls so both of these have entered into a strategic co lending agreement where they will be offering the home loans to the home buyers so what will happen because of which they will be able to synergize their capabilities and provide a efficient and seamless experience to the retail home loan customers so they have entered into this agreement to get the core benefit of co lending co lending is when a bank 
एंड एन बी एफ सी कम्स अप टूगेदर टू लैंड टूगेदर ओके सो वो दोनों मिल के साथ में लैंड करते हैं क्योंकि उससे उनको दोनों के जो भी पॉजिटिव हैं उसको साथ में ला के उसका बेनिफिट उठा पाएंगे जो बैंक होते हैं वो लो कॉस्ट मॉडल फॉलो करते हैं और वही जो हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज हैं जो आपके एन बी एफ सीज हैं जो नॉन बैंक हैं उनकी रीच बहुत ज्यादा है वो कस्टमर्स के साथ उनके कनेक्शन है काफी रीच है उनकी तो अगर एक बैंक जो लो कॉस्ट मॉडल फॉलो करता है और अगर एक एन बी एफ सी जो कि कस्टमर्स के साथ ज्यादा रीच रखता है दोनों अगर मिल जाएंगे तो आपस में दोनों के बेनिफिट्स को शेयर कर पाएंगे ओके दिस इज दाइनोजी बेनिफिट अपने दोनों के प्लस वो मिला के एक मेजर इम्पैक्ट ला सकते हैं अपने ओवरऑल बिजनेस में जिस वजह से इन दोनों को लेंडिंग के लिए अग्री किया है सो अ को लेंडिंग फ्रेमवर्क वॉज प्रपोज बाई आर बी आई वेयर दी बैंक एंड अ एन बी एफ सी और अ नॉन बैंक कम अप टूगेदर कोलेबोरेट टू बेनिफिट फ्रॉम लो कॉस्ट फंडिंग मॉडल ऑफ अ बैंक एंड कॉस्ट एफिशियंट सोर्सिंग एंड सर्विसिंग केपेबिलिटीज ऑफ अ नॉन बैंक सो बोथ ऑफ दीज आर परमिटेड टू को लैंड इन दिस वेरी केस ओके सो बैंक को लैंड विथ रजिस्टर्ड एन बी एफ सीज और हाउसिंग फाइनेंस कंपनीज एंड देर इज अ रिक्वायरमेंट इन दिस केस दैट एन बी एफ सी शुड रिटेन अ मिनिमम ऑफ ट्वेंटी परसेंट इंडिविजुअल लोन इन देयर बुक अगर दस करोड़ का से लोन दिया गया है तो उसका बीस परसेंट यानी कि दो करोड़ का जो अमाउंट है वो लोन के फॉर्म में एन को अपनी बुक में दिखाना होगा सो ओवरऑल लोन में एटलीस्ट ट्वेंटी परसेंट लोन एन की बुक्स में शो होना चाहिए जब वो को लैंड करते हैं दिस मीन्स अ लोन साइज इज इफ इट इज टेन करोड़ देन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ इट दैट इज टू करोड़ शुड बी शोन इन दी बुक्स ऑफ एन बी एफ सी सो दे आर गोइंग टू शेयर द रिस्क दे आर गोइंग टू शेयर द रिवॉर्ड बेस्ड ऑन देयर इंडिविजुअल एक्सपोजर्स टू दैट वेरी लोन अग्रीमेंट so the benefit is that the banks have the basic idea behind co lending and the basic benefit is that banks have money they have lower cost of funds nbfcs have greater reach on the ground so banks have money nbfcs have people on the ground so collaboration makes perfect sense okay this is why these two come a bank and a company have come up together for co lending purpose so if i move back to the question you had to identify the statement incorrectly related first is correctly related because it says it's an example of co lending agreement second is also correct because it talks about your minimum requirement of 20% is there for nbfc to show the loans in their books third is also correct that banks have money and nbfcs have greater reach so collaboration makes a sense so we had to identify incorrect none of them is incorrect that's why answer is option e so this was all for today's session with this i would like to end up this session thank you so much